Nevada pilots that United States Air Force BMW has an LS under the hood. Ryan Turk with that four cylinder turbo nitrous setup with that brand new Toyota GR Corolla front end and back end. The Rain X Toyota GR Corolla, I might add, with Nitto tires. And we are getting ready to send it for our first battle of top 16. As soon as the lights extinguish, they go toe to toe. Through the start chicane, as long as they don't hit a cone. There we go, we got a clean start. Here we go, Ryan Lontade and former Jim fans. Here we go, Ryan Turk initiates in that first outside zone. Pulls a little bit of hand rake in that first outside zone. Coming in view of the fence. Nice job, gets all the way out there. Let's see how transitions. Doesn't go all the way deep. Neither is Brandon Sorensen. Now Ryan Turk in that third outside zone. Brings it on close. Brandon, good proximity. Now through the touch and go into that final inside clip. Really well done by both the guys. A great way to start our top 16. You saw Turk get out there all the way. Brandon tried to follow him in. Didn't get as deep on his second. Left a little to be desired on that third. But getting out to that touch and go, they both did a good job in the inside clip. Yeah, that was a really great battle. Uh, this is what we're expecting to see throughout top 16. Looking at how uh, Turk is kind of setting the pace up front. Filling those zones. Could have been a little closer on two. But you can see Sorensen matching his line. Look at how well his car is positioned. He's not uh, making a compromise on the line. He's staying back, uh, you know, that little sort of three quarters positioning to the lead car. And that's exactly what we want to see. Ryan Turk getting that, that little bumper all the way out to outside zone one. Like I said, could have been closer on two, maybe a little bit closer on three. But overall, a great run that angle. for both of them. Yeah, the angle is phenomenal there. And uh, I, I'm really surprised, or not a surprise, sorry, impressed by Brandon's ability to stay with Ryan all the way through this run without making any major compromises. Uh, Brandon, I believe at his young age, is, is truly a sponge out there. He's soaking up everybody else, what they're doing. He watches and he says, oh, I'm supposed to do it that way. And then he mimics it. He's at a very high level for his age already. Imagine in a few years with the experience that, he, that he's going to gain. A few years, it be, might be this year. Sorry to cut be you this off. Year, because, yeah. I mean, the Sorensons, both him his sister and his young and their younger brother, you know, are just riding two wheels. They're riding in the dirt. They're going karting. Uh, even Amanda has uh, driven monster trucks. So just the the driving acumen of them yep. is definitely definitely awesome. So again, as we are seeing Brandon Sorensen now lead, Ryan Turk giving chase. Here comes Brandon Sorensen out front. A little slow trickle there out of the box, and let's see how they handle it. Brandon, Brandon Sorensen, a little swing right in front of that Toyota GR Corolla now coming through into that outside zone. Brandon gets out there. Now Ryan Turk, you see him taking a little bit of a line here, but how is he affected on front? So now Brandon Sorensen into that touch and go. Now coming into that first insert inside clip and the only inside clip. A little deep there for Turk. I want to take a look at that first where he initiated as well as that first outside zone. Brandon did a nice job in outside zone one. He was probably what, a couple inches further off than, than Ryan was, but um, I think what really is going to set them apart lead to lead is Brandon's outside zone three. So that's what we're going to have to take a look at. I think Turk did a better job in outside zone three. So Brandon gets the car to angle there. Nice job through the initiation. Back on throttle when he should be. Oh, he was a little bit further away than I initially thought there in outside zone one and two. But three is really where it comes apart a little bit for Brandon. He's not far enough out in three. Turk did a much better job through, I think, one, two, and three. Right here, Turk doesn't really drop off. a tire. He kind of rolls over the line, maybe, if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt there. But this is right here. Brandon needs to be closer to outside zone three. That's a, a significant area that he's kind of dropping off a little bit. And we'd like to see him closer there. So. Um, it's going to be left up to the uh, the judges now, and we'll see what they come up with. They, By the they, way, you're they. a judge. Yeah. <laughs> I better put my hey, right there now. he is. <laughs> Let's take a look at the BC Racing side-by-side. -side. I thought Brandon did a decent job on his lead, but that, I think, held Turk back. I, I think Turk shined in the right moments. The mm -hmm. mistakes where he had were, weren't kind of the points of interest. So let's look here at the uh, outside zone one. You can see that Turk was closer there. I think Turk and uh, Sorensen were maybe almost even on two, but three is where the big difference is. Uh, Brandon was quite a bit off of outside zone three. And right here, you can see the both of them coming in and just tapping that inside clip with their bumpers, not knocking it over, just kind of knocking it out of its little box. And there's no real uh, foul on either one of them in a major way in uh, the inside clip one area. Look at all these faces here. It's great to see y'all. Yeah, look at yourself on the big screen. Seeing your full face, it's great to be back here. So slide him left for Ryan Turk, right for Brandon Sorensen. One, two, and three, it's unanimous. Ryan Turk gets the wall. Comp cams, yellow speed racing, 
Liquamale, brand new Corvette for him, two new cars, same great drivers. Here we go. Chris, of course, Forsberg out front, gets the clean air. And that all new Z, Taylor Holt, a little bit more air, no bumper. Here we go, that first outside zone. Let's see how Forsberg and the new Z handles it. Gets all the way out there. Taylor Holt a bit shallow, going middle of the line. Let's see what Forsberg does. Gets out there, but now look at Taylor Hole. He strikes. Nice aggressive nature comes in really tight there. A little bit nervous. He didn't make contact. He took that shallower line, more aggressive line, kind of, uh, you know, early apex into that final inside clip. Yeah, I wasn't sure how that move was going to work out for Taylor Hall, but he made it work. He got around that white line, didn't hit the inside clip, and managed to get good proximity. Now, I am going to say that Taylor's initiation was late. He was beyond that uh, gray patch in the ground, so that's going to hurt him for sure. Need to get initiated by the one cone at the latest. But look at uh, t uh, Chris Forsberg, sorry, in the lead there, pushing really hard. The angle through outside zone three was phenomenal. And the fact that he was telling us earlier that uh, the 400, or sorry, the, the Z, is very <laughs> right. similar underpinnings to the 370Z. Yeah. So for him, it's very comfortable to get in this car. And it's obvious how comfortable he is in this car immediately. He basically started driving it. I think his dyno run yesterday. was on the track yesterday. He said that the tune had not happened till yesterday morning prior to practice. The first dyno run, right. he got read on the computer, and a lot of these tuners work remotely. They'll they'll plug in like you know Bluetooth Wi-Fi mm -hmm. connectivity, you know, yep. put them on a VPN network or something, and log in, and then tune their car on the go. That's the horse. That's the the power plant, the heartbeat of Ryan Turk's engine. Look at that. One, two, three, four cylinder four cylinders. turbo nitrous. That thing's a beast. Yep. And there it is. And truth be told, they changed that engine out this morning. <laughs> in order to make sure that it was going to run today, obviously runs up to snuff. So, question is, who is Turk going to go against? Will it be Taylor Hole, who is now leading that Comp Cams Corvette? Again, a great debut for him. And Chris Forsberg, a great debut for them, as they are now both in the top 16. We got a clean start, kids. Taylor Hole out front. Chris Forsberg in the chase position. Taylor Hole initiates. Solid little handbrake pull into the outside zone. There goes Taylor Hole. Forsberg taking a bit of a shallower line. Look at that. Look at how Chris Forsberg held back a little bit and allowed him to gain proximity. Now going to that final outside zone. He's going to dive in here on that touch and go. And Forsberg gets right to the side of Taylor Hole. That brand new all new Nissan Z. Great effort by both drivers. Solid lead run by Taylor Hole. Again, Really well done by both the drivers. And I have to remind you, brand new builds by both drivers. Very yeah, we, impressive. We, we can't discount what uh, Taylor Hall's doing here as well in a brand new car. Look how close he's getting to the walls here. Outside zone one, a little bit off of outside zone two, but he's doing an amazing job in the lead here, again, in a brand new car. Getting out to outside zone three, giving a good lead for Chris to follow. You can see him here with lots of angle coming into zone three. Chris is right there with him, putting on the pressure. On the transition here, Chris gets himself nicely positioned. Maybe dove in a little bit there, but uh, gets the car back to where it needs to be as he crosses the finish line. We take a look at it again. This is where we get different perspectives, the drone, the eye in the sky, the truth serum, as we like to call it. Taylor Hull, quick little handbrake pull, no problem. Works his way out there. The way Forsberg attacked that second outside zone yep. was very unique to a lot of the other drivers. He didn't get all the way out to the, the first outside zone, but he set himself up to really attack on the second outside zone, which is kind of, you know, it, it's it's give to get. I'm going to give a little to get more over here. Exactly. So that's a compromise. He compromised that first outside zone. Slide him left for Forsberg, right for Taylor Hole. One, two, and three. Chris Forsberg gets the win. Valiant effort by Taylor Hole. Hats off to him and the whole team. Get tires, field suspension, S15, Dean Carnage Carney. Twin Turbo, SRT10, Dodge Viper. Cody Bocci's leads. Dean Carney and his Viper give it chase. Cody Bocci's massive angle. Look at Dean Carney, transitions back under the bridge. Into that final outside zone. Dean shortening up a little bit as Cody, look at this, ticking all the boxes. Dean, that was pretty deep on the inside of that inside clip. But man, I'll tell you what, Dean Carney had a front row seat on a phenomenal run by Cody Bocci's. Yeah, if you look at the line that Odie was taking, it's really strong. Uh, unfortunately, in the chase position, Dean Carney wasn't really positioning his car where we'd like to see it. So they both initiate really well. Dean Carney's in proximity at initiation. As they go through uh, outside one, Dean Carney's there. But right here from two to three, you can see that Dean's on a much shallower line, not going all the way out to outside zone three. And then his mimic isn't ideal from 
the touch and go to inside clip one. He does drop a tire there as he doesn't go all the way wide uh, to get around that inside clip. So he does go in there and drop a tire. That will count against him as we do the chase to chase comparisons. Now, uh, we have to see what Odie's going to do in his chase run to be able to compare them. But uh, initially, we've got that one thing, or a couple of things going against Dean. There's being off of outside zone three by a pretty significant margin and dropping that tire on inside clip one. All right, so you can see right there that brand new, all new Z. Forsberg talking to his team, that NOS energy drink. GT Radial, all new Nissan Z. Thank you to Sam Cascani and Sam's Auto Land, Dwight Tanaka, the whole Long Beach Grand Prix Association for letting us uh, tear up the track. Until next week, we'll be back out here. Formula Drift Invitational will go down Friday and Saturday night. But of course, come back out here for the Grand Prix of Long Beach. All right, let's switch up the order here. The Dodge Viper, the Hyper NFT, daily driven exotics of Dean Carnage Carney. And Odie Bakshis. His wife is fodder in his ear. Let's see how he handles this. A little slow roll into that initiation, but nice job. Odie tempering back, and Dean Carney coming in. Woo, taps that bumper, gets a little out of shape. You know what, look at Odie. The composure from Bakshis after that hit was very commendable. Dean Carney risking it for the biscuit and he bit off. He slapped that biscuit bumper on the wall. Ryan, I'm really impressed with the composure of Odie. I mean, that could have grenaded, like you said, you said that earlier about somebody else. You know, if that was any other driver that didn't maybe have the kind of the wherewithal or the veteran driver, you know, attributes, that could have gone terribly bad. Absolutely. This right here is something that as a chase driver, you don't know Oof. what's going to happen. But look at the way he just transitioned. He stayed with Dean. He read the situation so well, but he did it so quickly. And that's what being a veteran and having so many laps under your belt can, can give you. Uh, just that composure and the knowledge that if something happens, I know how to react behind the wheel. And look, perfect mimic, perfect line all the way around that inside clip. So let's watch this again. You can see that Odie's got his, himself maybe a little bit less angle right there, but his mimic on the transition, the line is perfect. Look where his car is positioned. And this transition right there, really nicely done. Gets himself perfectly positioned around that inside clip. Stays away from the clip and doesn't hit it. That is a masterclass right there. Yeah, he, he's one to watch. And I, I said it I said it earlier, and he's living up to the hype and kind of what I said about him earlier. He's become one of the best chase drivers in the biz. Odie Bakshi, Dean Carney, slide him left for Odie, right for Carney. And there it is, another unanimous vote. Odie Bakshi gets the win, the Hyper NFT Dodge Viper. We'll see you. W. Give Modern Tell, what do you think? And the Suki. speed, along with the precision that he's showing on the track, it's a great combination. Yeah. Here we go. Rome Sharp is here. A lot of confidence in his corner. Always got a smile on his face. So does Stuky. That M Spec S chassis. There goes Rome Sharp is here. Now coming into view. Look at that. The, the attitude of the BMW. Look at Stuky. He gets out there. He does lose some ground. But Rome, automatic, looking like an RC car that is just being controlled by somebody in the sky. Yo, did you see that run? I mean, that was like a 90-something qualifying run. That was absolutely impressive. Beautiful. I mean, shoot holes in this. <laughs> shoot holes in this. Does it have the X factor? I mean, really well done. I only have a couple of holes to shoot in it. And I'll start off with the angle that he had from initiation to outside zone one. So if we watch right here, you can see that there's a little bit of movement in this car right there, and then he pours on angle uh, as he goes to outside okay. zone one. So there are a couple of little things, but his transition was solid. Outside zone two was good. He was closer than a lot of drivers on three. In this case, all he has to be is closer than uh, Stuki is. So we're going to see how Stuki does on his lead, but Stuki has a pretty high bar to meet here. So watch the angle in, in, in the car. You can see right there, he pours on a little extra angle uh, as he gets to the zone, but you better, you're better off having more angle there than not enough. So um, in, in terms of coming through there with a less angle and leaving it, I'd rather see him pour the angle on uh, in that situation. But yeah. of course, it's not perfect, but he's doing an amazing job in the lead here. Uh, getting that touch and go, getting inside clip one. Stuki put on the pressure at the end of the run there. You can see that he was getting closer. He was off a little bit uh, at outside zone one and two. Started to put the pressure on a little bit. Wasn't as close on outside zone three as Charpentier was, though. So there was, uh, in the chase position, Rome needs to show that he's capable of being as close or closer, but matching the line that uh, Stuki puts down. So that's where his opportunity is right now. 
I'm standing up. I told you I was going to get hyped, dude. You paid for the whole seat, you know. I'll just take this extra bridge seat with me if you don't want it. What's that? I'll just take this bridge seat with me if you don't want it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. It's, You're it's good? Kinda, yeah, we got new ones this year, so these aren't going anywhere. I know, they're gorgeous. Look, Ryan Sage leaves and he brings us new chairs. I love it. It's great. <laughs> he's sitting on a hard work chair. He's, he's, he's downgraded to a, a folding chair. Here we go, Daniel Stuckey, Rome Charpentier, as now Stuckey out front, M spec performance, S Jassy comes into view and gets almost all the way out there. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Stuckey taps the wall. Look at Rome, getting aggressive, out for the touch and go. Oh, Rome dives in on the inside. He gives himself a little bit of room there. He knew that he didn't have the right line. He dove in on that inside clip. Yep. Really well done by both the guys. Bravo. Stuckey didn't get all the way out there like Rome did, but as you said, you'd rather him step out as opposed to being shallow. Stuckey just came up short. But let's see how they handled it. He certainly didn't Looking come up again. short on outside zone two. So no. he was off of outside zone one. Look at the bumper flex here and the rear fender just as he scrapes the wall and outside zone two. Uh, we'll have to see this view here for how close he got to outside zone number three. Looks like it was pretty similar, maybe a little further off than what Rome did in his lead run. And then yeah. right here, uh, Rome kind of misses the touch and go and dives in on that tighter line to get to the inside clip, which causes him to have to slow up to get around there without going too wide for the finish. So definitely a couple of errors um, on both drivers' parts, and we're going to have to analyze where they were and uh, who had an advantage after both runs. All right, here's our BC Racing go for gold side by side. Lantane, Chris Yule, Brian Egger analyzing this. It's hard to uh, look at both, but you get a good idea here. Yeah, so Stuckey was nice and close. They seem to have about the same proximity there. Stuckey doing a good job in the chase until right about there. He falls off, and then you can see where he's offline at three. Rome was also offline at three. So maybe in the chase, the, the mistakes were sort of similar. They weren't in the exact same places, but uh, it might come down to the lead runs here. Uh, to, to decide who wins. The chase has sort of had a, maybe a, the same amount of errors just in different parts of the track. So, um, yeah, these two guys are yeah, loving it right they now. Are they are hyped, dude. I mean, look at them. They're outside of the cars. They're hyped. Hey, fans, what do you guys think of the driving? I can't hear you. Who, who, thinks, who thinks Rome Charpentier and the pink and green vehicle gets the win? Who thinks that Daniel Stuckey should get the win in the M-Spec S chassis? Who thinks they should go again and go one more time? You know what? Because you said one more time, it means you want to see more drifting. So that's why you're here. Can I hear you stomp your feet and make some noise? Let me hear you stomp your feet. And there it is. It's one more time. Let's go at it again. It's an OMT. So my wife, thank you, too. Thank you, Stephanie and Tyson and Parker and Rowan. Thank you to Rowan for coming. Here we go, back in the action. Chelsea Nova, Kyle Lemenis Mohan in the building. Chelsea Nova, big wide swing of that Pennzoil Lubricants. Mustang RTR Spec 5D. Big swing there from Chelsea Nova. Oh, massive angle from Genova. It looked like he was going to spin there, Ryan. How did he hang on to that? That was insano. Yo, wow. the amount of angle that he had going into outside zone three. Back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. We got to see that again. Kyle Mohan, Renewable Lubricants, Mazda Trix, Mazda RX-8. He's from right here in Long Beach. Chelsea Denofa, massive angle. Now keep in mind, Denofa, fourth overall last year, a real contender for the championship. All right, let's look at this initiation. Looks clean. You can see in the, in the chase there, uh, we had a little bit of a bobble from Mohan, but then look at Denofa on outside zone one and two. The angle here, is it doesn't look sustainable. It doesn't look like he was going to get through there, but he did. But you could tell that he had a lot of angle that drove him in a little bit. And then when it, when it came time to transition the car at the touch and go, he was on a bit of an odd line. So let's, if we can see here, he gets close to three, wow. but not quite in there. But not watch, deep. he's so close to the left side of the track because his angle was so big that I don't know if he was expecting the car to go in that much at that point in time. So that angle sort of hurt him a little bit line-wise. I mean, he, he spun out earlier in he practice, did. and that's what caused the contact earlier with another driver. So, you know, is, is the car just loose? Is that what he wants? Or is he just kind of dealing with what he's dealt? Uh, I'd, I'd really, I mean, I, I know Vaughn, you know, Vaughn, his, you know, he's team owner, RTR, right? So uh, he was 
you know, teammate and the captain, but now he's uh, just kind of kicking back. He's going off-roading and, and kind of hung his helmet in the drifting world. But uh, Chelsea Denofa, I'm sure he's going to get some insight from uh, whoever's in his ear. But guess what? Kyle Mohan would love to play spoiler. His best finish was here in Long Beach. He got fourth. Has never, has never podium. Would love to see him podium right here in Long Beach. Uh, you know, the lone rotary in competition, the lone, Ma the lone Mazda in competition. Would love to see him throw down. But uh, Chel Chelsea is definitely, like I said, fourth over on the championship, a real contender. And here we go. That renewable lubricants, Mazda RX-8, Mazda Tricks comes in to view and into that first outside zone. Gets all the way out there. Chelsea Nova wow. slaps the wall and gets out of shape. Now coming to that final outside zone, big angle from Mohan into the touch and go. Denofa applying the pressure. I'll tell you what, Denofa, he went a little ham, dude. Like he, he, did. He, he was going for it. And Mohan, I don't know if he was going to fall in there. Mohan, really deep, really good lead run. It was, it was. And it's, uh, it's inter interesting to see the different dynamics of both cars and the different driving styles of both of these drivers. But Chelsea Denofa here, he gets out to the wall in the chase position, and it looks like it actually forced his transition a little bit early. So, hey, yeah, that's what it was. As soon as he hit the wall, the car started to straighten, and he just decided to transition. But he made it work. There was a bit of a pause there. But you can see that um, in the lead position, Kyle was doing a great job. He hit that uh, inside clip with the bumper there, but overall, really great run from from Kyle Mohan. Let's look at focus on Kyle here instead of uh, Chelsea. Really great, right out to the wall, and again that forced transition from the wall hit there. But look at the line that Kyle Mohan's running. Great on one, great on yep. two, out to three. Uh, that gave Chelsea the ability to really run a great chase run behind him, and I don't think he could have done such a great chase run behind. A lead run no. that wasn't high level as well. Yeah, it was. I mean, hats off to Mohan. You know, he's he's had some kind of bad luck over the years, but uh, as you know, it, it was a great run. Denofa just has that impact, that X factor that we always talk about. And you know, going from qualifying now into head to head, the, the numerical system's out the window. Slide him left for Denofa, right for Mohan, and Denofa gets the win. Brian, that was unanimous. Yeah. Great lead run by Mohan. But I think it defaults back to with Chelsea. The judges wanted to decipher who reigns supreme. Who's going against Fox Chiefs in the grade eight? Rome or Stuki? Rome Sharpetier initiates Stuki. A little bit of delay there on initiation. Going to the outside zone. Rome does it again. Back at it like a crack at it. Nice shot. Shreds that back bumper up. Look at Stuki and Spec. A Spec on his shoulder trying to flick it off. But no, Stuki right into the door. Woo, there we go. Houston, we have contact. Well played there by Stuckey, making his presence felt literally and figuratively. Give him a little love tap. Ryan, what do you think? That was fun to watch, Jared. We're getting into some fun battles here. It looked like Rome up front was running as wide as he could. If you see outside zone one, ended up knocking his tail light out on the wall. So as we watch from the eye in the sky here, you can see that in the chase position there, Stuki's initiation was not <laughs> as dynamic as I'd like to see. You can see that uh, Rome up front bumps the wall at outside zone one, gets nice and deep in two, and uh, all not you know, okay in three, could have been deeper. Stuki in the chase is compromising on line there. I'd like to see him matching Rome's line a little bit better. Uh, right here again, you're gonna see Rome's bumper come off, the tail light as well. Doing a great job here, but here this is where uh, Stuki's not getting out as deep as Rome did. So definitely a compromise there to help maintain that proximity. You can see the front of his car surpassing the front of Rome's car, and that's what we don't want to see. We want to see the the chase car kind of at three quarters, let's say, of the of the lead car. So just don't exceed. You well, kind of want to just tuck into the, you know, we always call it the pocket or get into formation. Yeah, the pocket is definitely where the, let's say the chase car's front right tire is in the lead car's uh, driver's door, left side door, right about that. You don't want to have yep. the front wheels even. You want to have the lead car back a little bit. That'll put their rear bumpers a lot closer to uh, where they should be uh, to be matching one another. Yeah, that's that outside zone. With with this just being such an outside zone heavy track yep. with the walls, I mean, literally three outside zones, one touch and go, one inside clip to put an exclamation point on the run. Yep. So you want to back, back it up. And uh, yeah, like a drummer chick, like a brrr, drummer chick. Here we go, back at it, here we go. Stuki and Rome Charpentier. Let's see how we go down. I, I guarantee you, watch Rome. 
He says, anything you can do, I'm going to do better. And he's going to try to bang doors with Stuckey. Now comes back in into that second outside zone. Rome Sharp is here. I think he's setting himself up right wow. here. Oh, and Rome spins. Rome spins out. We'll back that up and take a look at the replay, but it looks like Rome might have taken himself out. It didn't look like any, you know, fishy business. What, what, what did you think? Well, we'll have to see that glance. from, uh, hopefully we get the drone view on that to see what happened, it's to see if Rome's the one that uh, kind of came into Stuckey's door, if Stuckey slowed down and gave Rome nowhere to go. Those are the two options, or potentially uh, a combination of both. So right at the initiation, both drivers looking really strong. Stuckey, Stuckey out deeper. wide to outside zone one. You can see that Rome uh, compromised on the line a little bit there. Oh, there was a bobble from Stuckey in the lead position. All I right. don't know. Oh, yeah, he did get into the looks wall looks like Stuckey hit the wall, and that yeah. would cause the back end of Stuckey to come out and tap Rome. So let's take a different perspective out of here, Ryan. Go ahead, walk us through. Yeah, I didn't think the wall tap had affected him that much. It looked like the back of his car just absorbed it, but maybe that wall tap is what slowed him down. The and smoke. Then, uh, the smoke blinded us. Let's let's take a look at it again. I, I think that drone, again, the truth serum. Oh, this right is going to be a good this one. Might help. So that he did tap the wall. I just expected him to graze through it and go through, but maybe he did get off the throttle because he was worried. You can see that his line is way inside going from outside zone three to the touch and go, uh, which is not what we want to see either. There should be an arc there, and the, the arc sort of wasn't there. So maybe uh, Stuckey did get off the throttle in, you know, kind of in fear of uh, going into that wall too strong. Oh, it does affect the attitude. Great. There we go. Watch this. Watch the car. It kind of comes. It does straighten out. It slows down. Yep. This reminds me of an RTR battle of the past. <laughs> One where a Chelsea Denofa enters in with one Von Gittin Jr. on his tail. Who is at fault? I don't know. Some say Chelsea, some say Vaughn. TBD. We'll never know. <laughs> Choose your own adventure. <laughs> but it's kind of reminiscent of that. That's where it went down. And uh, that was that was kind of similar to that where, you know, a, a vehicle was affected. Stuckey going in the wall. Did it disrupt enough? We'll see. But... Uh, Pretty exciting stuff regardless. Rome Charpentier, an aggressive, awesome driver. Daniel Stuckey. Hey, look at look at Stuckey. His first pro event. Here he is in the 16, throwing down with Rome, who's, I mean, just, again, another force to be reckoned with. So I think it really comes down to did, did the wall, because they both had, you know, so back it up. Rome, good lead run. Stuckey, right there, set himself up the the... Just to clarify, Ryan. Stuckey just had a slightly tighter line at outside zone three. So he wasn't really mimicking what on Rome leader was doing. Chase. On his chase. So when Rome was leading, he tapped outside zone one, got relatively close to two, got out to three, but then Stuckey in the chase did not f come back, uh, back his car into three. He was inside on three. So that's where he compromised his line to maintain proximity. Yeah. If you look at what Rome was doing here in the chase, Rome was matching better I think maybe he made a slight compromise on line at outside zone two, but got back on line through three, and that's where he was matching the line, and uh, Stuckey tapped the wall. It looked like maybe uh, <laughs> as the, the car lost angle, got into uh, Rome a little bit. Mm, what, what are you going to tell me right now? No, I just, I, 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 I'm listening to you. I'm just seeing, seeing your, uh, your peers of judges and their outcome. Here we oh. go. <laughs> are they going one more time? Are, there, are we getting a winner? Here we go. Oh, look at that. One more time. That is the same judging outcome as the first battle between them. Dude, how's your arm feeling? They're just killing you with that arm wrestling cup. Here we go. Former champ, defending champ, Frederick, Norwegian Hammer Osmo, Rockstar Energy Drink, Toyota, GR Supra, Jordan Metzeldahl from Dominican Republic, Jonathan Castro in chase position. Osmo gets all the way. One, two, back at it. Filling all that outside zone of number three into the touch and go, go for gold, literally. And, ooh, Castro, really heavy on the inside clip. I mean, look at Osbo is just, wait, where are we at again? Okay, cool. Like you said, the humility is just dripping off of Osbo. You tell me where to put the car, I'll put the car. You want me to keep it up front, keep it clean? I'll put it right there. Amazing driving by Frederick Osbo. Jonathan Castro is clearly very hungry. Look how close he is at initiation. There was a maybe a foot between the yeah. two cars at initiation through that first corner. Jonathan Castro is pushing so hard here. He's not running the exact same line, and his transition was too early there, but he's managing to put the car close from start to finish. 
he needs to do what he's doing right now just on a more uh, a adequate line, let's say, um, one that's matching what Osbo's doing. And, and the biggest indication here that he's on that tighter line is that he ended up running over inside clip one with, I think, the two front tires going off track. Maybe one. Yeah, it's maybe like one. one and a half. So at least one tire off there, but that's where you can see it most obviously that he's he's just compromising on line enough to stay in proximity. And um, I think that he's doing an amazing job though. His his hunger here to be to be close to Osbo and push as hard as he can and not leave anything on the table is inspiring to see. Like that's yeah. what we want to see. Just needs to work a little bit on his his accuracy with that. You're saying he's pushing so hard, but it looks a little bit more effortless than previous years of Castro. Absolutely. So it looks just effortless. Like he's got the the, the power and the smoothness. He's got and the, the car, precision. Yeah, the car and the engine to do it. So he's given been given the tools to be able to perform at the level that he can. And the other one is stay gold, Hammer Boy. Here we go. G O L D gold. That's what we're talking about with Frederick Osbo chasing down Jonathan Castro. Castro comes out there, gets all the way out, dialing it in. Look at that. Osbo comes up a bit short there. Castro with massive angle. Frederick Osbo going against his Toyota GR teammate. I'll tell you what. Castro is absolutely flexing on him. DR style right there. <laughs> Castro comes in sideways. He's just like, come on. He's chomping at the bit. He is slobbering. He, he is, is so, slobbering yeah. right now. So excited after that run. And he should be. That was an awesome lead run. He got out to all the zones, he did an awesome job, and I think he even had uh, Frederick Osbo making some compromises in the chase. If you look at outside zone one, pretty similar online, but right here, it looked like Osbo transitioned kind of the same way that Castro did in his chase, and got himself on a tighter line through two, and going to outside zone three, you can see that Osbo is not matching the line either. Look how far ahead he is right there. Dude. Whereas Castro is way out wide, so you could say that a lot of the, uh, the mistakes that are made by both cars or the compromises are very similar after both of these runs. So good for Castro for laying down an incredible lead run. He should have done that run in qualifying. Right. But so here, let's go. Side let's side not side. cross. That. Look at the proximity, the proximity that Castro has in the chase. Incredible. And you can see here that uh, it's very, very similar. This is, this is almost a carbon copy run for run. You can see that they're making the same compromises. The only big difference, I think, is that Osbo just uh, stayed on the outside of that white line at inside clip one, whereas Castro put a tire off. But otherwise, very, very similar there for both drivers. I think Castro was in the chase, so chase position for either driver. Castro was closer on second outside zone, which is a difficult one to manage. And Castro was closer on going into initiation into outside zone one. Yep, so, that's fun to watch. <laughs> I see Brian rubbing his hands together yeah. over there. I don't know what that means. Start but. Here we go. Slide up left for Osbo, right for Castro. We got one more time, one more time. Yeah. You get it one more time. I can watch that battle all day long. My man over here, before, before you even start talking about it, this guy says, play it again, play it again. And I feel like the Oprah of one more times right now. Look under your seat. You get it one more time. You get it one more time. Everybody gets it one more time. That was a phenomenal battle. DA, whatever you want to call him. RCP, that makes it easy, versus Daniel Stuckey. The garage stick BMW, not once, twice, but three times, a maybe. Now into that first outside zone, Stuckey taking a shallower line. This could be the deciding factor. That's what you talk about, the X factor. Now into that touch and go, Stuckey dives in on the inside. Oh, oh there's that contact. Oh, oh, shoot. Got a little too aggressive there, Jared. Yeah, we got an RCP pinata, but there's no candy inside. And it's just a little angry RCP now. <laughs> he zigged when he should have zagged. I think, he, right yeah, he, he, he's, yeah, he, he zed when he should have X-factored. Maybe. He Z-factored instead of X-factored. It looked like Stuki got a little aggressive there coming to the inside clip, made contact with uh, RCP. Let's just yep. call him that. And then RCP over-rotated a bit because of that hit. And of course, Stuckey still had some momentum going, so ended up with that second hit that may prove to be more troublesome than the first one, you know, physically to the cars. Hopefully they can uh, get these cars pulled apart safely here and get back to their pits. And we will have to get a, a, de a definition of fault here so that we can see who uh, has to call a competition timeout. All right, walk so us through looking here, at this replay, nice smooth initiation, back on throttle really quick, which I love to see. RCP out super wide on one, could have been closer on two. You can see in the chase position there, looks like Stuckey's doing a much better job of positioning himself in the right place. But right here, Stuckey dives in, makes contact, get back, gets back on throttle thinking that RCP was going to keep going. But of course, Charpentier 
kind of got spun out there, had to stop. And you can see just before contact, the second contact, Stuki's on throttle. So right here you can see Stuki gets into the pocket, comes ahead a little bit, and then right here is where the problem is. He dives in, gets into the side of Rome, and then gets back on throttle for a second hit. So hopefully that didn't make too much damage uh, to Rome's car, but look at Rome, how precise. Love Just a kiss of the it. wall right there. Stuki was off of outside zone one, off of outside zone two. Coming to three is where he positioned himself a little bit better, but was still a little bit ahead there. But this, again, is the problem. Watch the dive in here from Stuki. Gets way inside, doink. makes that first, and then and throttles doink. into the second one. Yeah. Yeah, if he would have backed off, I think, I mean, in that moment, in that panic, kind of like, sure. stay in it, because he got to stay he, close. Well, he just did it on that last battle. Yeah. You remember, he banged his door, and he's like, okay, I'm going to stick in it, you know, like, yeah. it's going to be that kind of party. I'm going to stick my wheel to mashed <laughs> potatoes. Because they hit wheel to wheel there, it looks like, on the first hit, which probably yanked the wheel out of, uh, out of Rome's hands, maybe, and yeah. make, made him spin out. And then uh, that was that was totally out of his control in that situation. Yep, yep. All right, so uh, as we are, look at this place. I mean, it's still just jam-packed. You guys having fun, Long Beach? Stomp your feet, make some noise, let everybody know you're here at Long Beach, the streets of Long Beach. When we come back, we'll continue here at the AutoZone streets of Long Beach, presented by Type S. Clean up on aisle three. We'll be back at it and see some more at two-time FD champion, Frederick Osbo. Again, stay gold, hammer boy. There it is, that was last year at Irwindale. Another season culminated, and there's two and three, but Osbo got the heaviest trophy of them all. A culmination of the season, surprisingly. Osbo won only one event, and we talked about this earlier, Lontane. It's not just about wins, it's about consistency. And that will be a word that you're gonna hear through the entire entirety of the season. Consistently, consistency. You're going to be hearing that. Yeah, exactly. You're going to what? Mostly from you and I, hearing that word. Consistency, consistency, yeah. consistency. Yeah. It's going to play a big part in who makes it to uh, the championship at the end of this season. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Like I said, I mean, you know, Osbo winning only one event. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, Chris Forsberg won a championship without winning an event. Yeah. So again, second, third, fourth getting carbon fiber trophies throughout the season. Our, our trophies are fluted, they're carbon fiber. And uh, again, the final ones, the championship, second and third, they're metal for a reason. As we are getting our vehicles up to the line, waiting for Castro. Wondering what's going on here at the start line. Yeah, the hood's popped and those are officials. Yeah, so we're, this is pre-burnout maybe, I think it's pre-burnout. He's far enough back that he potentially hasn't done his burnout yet, but something is uh, catching their eye back there. But that's not even his crew. That's exactly. our FD staff. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm kind of catching the staff's eyes. Piqued my interest. You have to wonder if there was a fluid leak underneath or something that they're they're looking for the source of. Because where they're positioned at the start line, there are no uh, team members, I believe, back there. Yeah, yeah, there is something wrong, Jared. They're going to have him pull it to the hot pits, and they will. Uh, I guess he's calling a competition timeout for that yeah, to happen. Yeah, that that would be a competition timeout. You're allowed one and allotted only one, so. Jonathan Castro, who had so much momentum, is doing it one more time, but competition timeout, five minute allotment once hands get on the car, and that's a perfect time to utilize it. And what's interesting enough here is uh, Papadakis operates both of those vehicles. Yes. So here we are in the NGK competition timeout. Thank you to NGK for their support of the series as do spark plugs time out? They sure do. And timely spark plug replacement only prevents fouling and provides the best engine performance. It ensures less repair time. It can save you money on your unnecessary repairs. Visit ngksparkplugs.com to learn more about OE suggested spark plug intervals and find the best plug for your engines. NGK, the ignition specialist. So we still have the two, so we've gone through two and a half runs of Roman Stuckey. So we are going back to Roman Stuckey. And did, did we need to admit faults on that second one more time? Or the, so it was? Yes. OK, so we did need to admit fault. Who was at fault between Daniel Stuckey and Roman Charpentier in that final inside clip? Stuckey was at fault. Stuckey was too aggressive. Yep. He got into the side of him, stayed on the throttle, disrupted the lead 
cars line. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So uh, in that situation, Rome could look at his car without any kind of uh, competition timeout yeah. being taken. Uh, he was given that time to uh, repair the car, and it looks like he has it repaired. Uh, it doesn't. I don't know. I didn't get any feedback on whether or not Stuki had any damage, but um, I can ask. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see any. His lady's over there. I saw his spotter. All right, so. All right, so Stuki did call a five as well uh, during that uh, Rome free repair time, let's yeah. call it. Um, Stuki did call a competition timeout. So uh, we now know that Stuki does not have one of those left. Well, it could very well be over for Stuki unless Rome makes a mistake. You know, or or Stuki really steps up, and you know. So basically, what 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 happened here is we have the one half of this battle. So this is the uh, second one more time, right? So they ran initially. They had it one more time. They had another one more time. So there's a second one more time. So we're basically at two and a half times yep. that that we're going through this battle. At the end of this, we will either have a verdict. But Daniel Stuki is at a deficit from the judge's point of view because of he had that contact, disrupted the run of Rome Charpentier out front. RCP will have an advantage in the judge's eyes because of the contact being made. Yes, Stuki hit Rome, Rome spun out. Because Stuki was at fault for that, for causing the spin, um, essentially Stuki inherits that incomplete. So Stuki's on an incomplete right now. Uh, Rome is basically if he completes the course in the chase position within proximity, he's got, he's it. Gonna, he's got it, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, the the only way, realistically, that Stuki can move forward here is if Rome makes uh, a big error in the chase, and if it's, um, you know, chase to chase and completes, we go to the leads. We're about to find out. We are back at it. Here we go. Daniel Stuki, M-Spec Performance, Rome Charpentier, Garage Distance, BMW E36. Stuki, very shallow, might have had a bit of damage more than he expected with that contact. So Stuki not setting himself up for success. If Rome continues on through the course, your number five qualifier should have the victory, and there it is. Rome Charpentier will be getting the win, but guess what? He's going against a vicious driver in Odi Bakshis. So uh, again, unofficially going through the course, Stuki's at a deficit, he had the contact, Rome just needed to navigate the course, and it looks like that is what happened. So Rome will get the win. Let's take a look at it again here, Ryan Lontaine. Yeah, good initiation by both drivers, nothing really to, do, uh, to speak about there. Stuki did not get out to outside zone one, wasn't as deep as we'd like on two, and on outside zone three was off a little bit there as well. So definitely left some points, uh, you know, theoretical points on the board, let's say. Uh, had some areas where he could have improved. And Rome in the chase did what he had to do in the chase position to maintain proximity, get through the course uh, without uh, incurring an incomplete himself, which allows him to take the win in this situation. All right, so let's take a look and we'll make it official from our judges. Ryan, uh, I believe you, uh, did you tap in already? I tapped in All right, long ago. and uh, Ryan Egger. Chris Yule, Ryan Lontain, slide him left for Rome, right for Stuckey, and there we go. Rome Charpentier gets the win. Man, hey, round of applause for Daniel Stuckey, making it top 16, his first ever Formula Drift Pro event. Look at that, both these guys congratulating each other. Great job, look at, can't open his door. You want some help from that? Oh, look at that, there we go. Stuckey of Hazard over here. Going against Masayama qualified 22nd. So Dylan Hughes will lead the Royal Purple O'Reilly Auto Parts Permatex. BMW, he's got a 2JZ on the hood, he's got new tires, he teamed up with Falcon tires for the year. And Masayama, that buy now Japan, Sylvia Sutin, comes now into view of the fans here in the building. Nice job on the outside zone. Masayama gripped up, kind of dove in. Dylan Hughes using all the course, hanging out on the outside zone two, Bill's outside zone three. Masayama, a little shallow, needs to gain proximity, and there he does around that final clip. Really well done in the latter portion of the story. But early on, Dylan flexing on him. Yeah, Dylan did great on outside zone one and two. You can see Masuyama there struggling a little bit early on. But as we watch this replay, we'll be able to see it a little bit better. Initiation-wise, good job from both. You can see a little bit less angle from Masuyama right there, but he gets back to angle. Not quite as wide as Dylan on outside zone one or two. Did slightly better on three, but still could have been positioned a little bit better. And then coming through the inside clip, perfect through there. The, the line was great, the proximity was good, and the mimic was pretty solid. So right here you can see where 
Dylan Hughes gets all the way out to that wall. Masuyama seems to struggle a little bit with that transition, getting the car positioned for outside zone number two. And then again on three was just off a little bit. So this will be a good view right here. You can see that Masuyama is not surpassing the front wheel mark, but he, he does have the car kind of positioned back where we'd like to see it. And then coming into inside clip one, beautiful line through there. Nicely done uh, by Masuyama in the chase. And of course, to have that good chase, you need to have a solid lead. And uh, I think that Dylan did a great job up front, positioning the car where it needed to be. And now he's going to have to stay nice and close to Masuyama and do a better job in the chase than Masuyama did. So a big area that he can focus on is outside zone one and two, that transition, really mimicking what Masuyama is doing in the lead. And if he does that in the chase in a, in, a, in a solid way, he can really kind of push himself forward in terms of the chase to chase comparisons. Yeah, so basically don't extend him too much. You don't need that, again, X factor. We keep referencing that, but, but make your presence felt. Make your presence felt and mimic him well. That's where he can kind of differentiate himself from Masuyama in that area. Uh, Masuyama didn't get out wide on two, on one or two, and his transition was a little bit off. It was a little shaky looking. There was some bobbles. Yeah, and if you're Masuyama, you need to throw it down. You got Dylan Hughes in your rear view mirror. Ma oh, look at that. Right there, just mimic each other on that initiation. Masuyama almost gets all the way out there. And now, look at that nasty transition by Masuyama. Dylan Hughes, this is what you're talking about right there. Is this enough? Now it comes into that final inside clip. Masuyama. I, again, question mark, dot, yeah. dot, dot, buffering. I don't know, whatever analogy you want to say. <laughs> Masuyama had a great lead run. That transition from one to two was solid. That looked really good. It was fast. It was accurate. And it had that X factor, I think. So watch the initiation. They both did a great job there. Looking at what Dylan's doing in the chase, his angle is a little bit less. It looks yeah. like maybe Masuyama's getting away, but he kind of made a, a little compromise through one and two. I don't think it was as big as what Masuyama did in his chase. And I think that on the, on the latter half of the track, uh, that uh, Dylan Hughes did a much better job than Masuyama. So look right here. So Dylan definitely isn't as wide. He doesn't have the angle. On the transition, same thing. See him you quickly can, adjust. You can almost say that, you know, from that view, it looked pretty similar, um, chase to chase, Masuyama and Dylan. Looking at this portion of the track here, hmm, this is a very similar set of runs yeah. on closer inspection. Yeah, really yeah it's, it's, you know, and, and Lantane, it's, you know, you're kind of digesting this. You're talking about it. You're looking at it. You're digesting it. You're just stating facts in regards to what's going on. And, and again, you have a, a unique role now coming into 22. Ryan Lantane, a longtime judge for 12 years, as you said, right? 12, 12 is, the, years. is the number you said. Yeah. Slide him left for Hughes, right for Masayama. Dylan Hughes gets the Dylan win. Dylan Hughes gets it. There's are in the chat room right now. Yep. So Ryan Turk, brand new livery, brand new bumpers, that all new Rain X Toyota GR Corolla going against the all new NOS Energy Drink. Nissan Z on GT radios, here we go. Ooh, Ooh Chris Wojcik, way late initiation. Ryan Turk initiates, massive initiation. Tiny bumper, doo -doo -doo -doo. he goes into that wall and now into that third outside zone. Forsberg now turning it up. What went wrong for Forsberg out of the gate? Oh! Gets out of shape. Yeah, something's wrong. Something is not 100 for Chris the Force Forsberg. He has not used his competition timeout yet, but something was afoot. Where's Ryan Turk going? Aren't they supposed to turn around right there? I think both of them might be uh, yeah. having a little bit of cough. Need a, need a lozenge. <laughs> Smooth it out. Yeah, that was strange from Forsberg in the chase position. That was a very late initiation. Uh, I'd like to see the replay on that again. They're both going back to their pit Yeah, area, Turk's going to his so, pit. Yeah. So, do they think that was the second run? No, I, I think they both might be having issues. So, as we watch here, look at where the the last cone is. Forsberg is well, well beyond where that latest initiation point is. Angle is suffering there through outside zone one. Line wasn't great at two. Ryan Turk in the lead position is doing a great job. And then his transition here, he overhangs that angle right there. It looked like he got a little bit too close and then transitioned uh, kind of in, a, in an awkward way, but Kind of doesn't matter after that late initiation. That was late enough that you could call that an incomplete. It was very, very well, uh, very well beyond where he should have been initiating. So I think there was contact made, and that's why Ryan Turk went back. But who was at fault? So I can see Dom there, Kuzi, and they were taking a look at it just to see if there was maybe some damage. I think that's what it was. Maybe, okay. uh, maybe Lorette Nickel could let us know what's going on there. So uh, yeah, I, I think there was contact, but who was at fault? Did you were saying overhang? 
Are you saying Turk hung it out there too long, Chris couldn't go anywhere, or Chris hung it out and he didn't let Ryan Turk kind of go and he was impeding in his transition? That's what it looked like to me, that Chris was kind of in the way of uh, Ryan making his transition and perhaps he didn't give him the room to do it and that's where the contact occurred. All right, so potential catastrophe there. Yeah, let's take a look at it again. So Ryan Turk comes out swinging, initiates Chris way beyond that. Again, the three, two, one cones hanging on the fence. You need to initiate before that final cone. Chris didn't do that. He rolled into it late. And then right here on this transition, ready, bink. So I believe, again, Chris just didn't let him go by. He hung it out there. So here's and the then, view again, that little touch right yeah. there. And yeah. it could. It, it, the way Chris was steering, I believe it probably was just front right tread because that would expose the treads. Yeah. And I think that back bumper just glanced it. So that's why Turk said, all right, just go pull in. Right. Let's go take go a look. Right in there. So yeah, watch this. So exposed, okay, Forsberg's applying. So see how's, no, oh, oh, watch Chris Forsberg's front left. You'll see it, click, click. So he does snap. It does okay. throw him out of shape. Yep. The plot thickens. Yeah. And, you know, what's interesting here is we talked about it when we came out of 32. It wasn't tumultuous. We only saw one more, one, one more time. We saw one, uh, you know, one accident between Jonathan Hurst going to the wall and him and Ryan Literal. But, but this is what I did expect. This is what I did expect. And uh, we are seeing that. Five for Chris. Forsberg is calling a competition timeout. He was at fault because of the contact. So Chris Forsberg will call a competition timeout. He's got a five-minute allotment. So not only you know, did he not start off the line properly, also had that contact. I think that's a, that's a smart decision. He's going against number one qualifier. He's going against his good friend as we get an up-close up -close view of that NOS energy drink. Nissan Z, the brand new, all new Nissan Z. So I was wondering, was it a, a result, was the competition timeout a result of something that occurred on the run up to initiation or was it because of the hit? And now you see somebody with a torque wrench at the front right wheel, so perhaps it's from the hit. Well, guess what, uh, Lorette, we want to find out what's going on with Chris Forsberg. Lorette, again, was it the contact or was he running 100%? Hey, Chris, so we were wondering why you called the five minute and the car is rolling away uh, as the guys are checking the tires there we go chris so was it the contact or the car not running right or is something else happening uh we actually had i i couldn't get it into fourth gear on the straightaway which caused the big separation i went for fourth and it just wouldn't go in um not quite sure if i was just shipping it too quickly or if there was maybe a clutch issue but um it it just ground real bad finally got it in so i was trying to make up ground we caught back up to him got in the pocket and turned two and then uh, i just stayed in that pocket a little too long and when Ryan came to transfer, he caught my front uh, right with his left rear. So my wheel's crooked. We're just straightening it out. And we're going to go give it our best. Okay. Are you worried about the gearbox at this point? Um, well, I mean, a little bit. <laughs> As in, you know, just kind of try and make sure we get it in the high gear and let it rip. Okay, best of luck. Thank you. Jared, Ryan. Some great insight there. And uh, Lorette, thank you so much. Getting some insight there. A little bit of nerves there. Regardless, Chris debuting a, a new car. You know, a new chassis, new development. You're talking about how similar the 370Z, his previous vehicle, championship vehicle, to this vehicle, but it's still new. It's it a is. new build, For new sure. hands, new welds, new this, new, new all that. Yep. I'm, I love getting insight from Lorette down there. You know, we're up here guessing. We made some guesses that were accurate, kind of. But it's still but just that guess. It's just awesome to have that. Uh, initial feedback from Chris, immediately getting the answer and knowing what the issue is. Um, and it, uh, it just helps us be more informed for, for going forward, so that's awesome. Taking a look, Odie Bakshi, he will lead, going against Rome Charpentier, and he talked about he's going against his friend, he's going against his homie, but guess what? All bets are off right now because who are you betting on, Odie or Rome? Odie, very proven. He's done it here in Long Beach before, can he do it again? Odie, look at that angle, but Rome Charpentier. Oh, oh no, 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 no. And Rome Ooh. Charpentier goes off course. Could have been a lot worse there for Rome. That could have been awful, but he, he seemed to have saved it, just glanced the wall, a light touch of the tires. That and, this, been... and this is how it unfolds. Wow. Attrition, you know, getting out there, the, the nerves. I, I don't know where it exactly went wrong. Obviously, after outside zone one, it almost looked exactly what Adam LZ did yeah. earlier. Goes and transitions into the outside zone two, straightens up, and then goes in. So 
you can see that front right corner could have been a lot worse. Way worse. That's probably a tie rod or something in the front right that'll be broken. Um, they can, I think, should be able to fix this car. It's nothing like the Hurst crash where the whole front right was crushed in. Right. This was more of a glancing blow to the wall, I believe, and then into the tires. Well, you, we'll you can see. see the buckle in his hood there. It might be worse than we think, but hopefully it's not. Looking at the replay, Odie gets the car to angle. Rome does a great job right behind him. Great mimic there on initiation. Coming around here, look at Odie's angle. Transition. Yeah, Whoa. Rome gets the angle and it snaps back. So he, he went into that wall with the wheels cut. So that definitely is going to have broken something in the front right. But here it goes again. Great angle from Odie on one. Rome's doing a great job. And just as the car transitions, it grips up, goes into the wall, and then into the tires. So the question is here, I, I don't, I, I, I can't recall him calling a competition timeout previously. I don't have it on my notes here. I believe he should have one. So he'll, he'll be able to fix it. And, yeah. and you talk about the buckled hood. Now, keep in mind that front end has already taken a hit from Stuckey. All right, get back to the cars, boys. Let's go. Let's party. <laughs> we get, we get, we'll, we'll have a conversation over coffee later. We may need a tow truck for this one, so we might be waiting for a minute. There, and there it, it is. is. Yeah, so they're going to have to tow the uh, BMW off the track. And you can see here, this is an interesting view for us that we haven't seen yet, the car going into the tires. It looked pretty light. There shouldn't be any front end damage that isn't repairable. And uh, that front right suspension should be fairly easy to repair. Here's the view from the sky. It just looks like the car gripped up and he couldn't right. get it to rotate and ended up in the tires. So um, the tires did their job today, Jared. Boop the snoot. Boop the snoot. And he booped the snoot of his BMW right there. Odie Bakshi's did exactly what he needed to do. Continue on with the entire of the course. When you are the lead car, you need to complete regardless of what the chase car does. Quite the contrary, when the lead car makes a mistake, chase car, park it, back off, damage control. Yep. You, whatever you do out front <laughs> is, is on you, baby boo. Yeah, so. that, that lead car incomplete ends the run, whereas a chase car incomplete requires the lead car to still complete the course, which Odie did in this case. So. So we are waiting to get Rome Sharpens here. Hey, shout out to Cow Club. Thank you to Cow Club. They're always out here. They'll be back here next weekend. The all white corner workers, the guys and gals, the tow truck safety facility. Thank you to the Long Beach Fire Department. Rome Sharpens here. Smiles for miles for RCP. Amazing head of hair. Takes that helmet off and he's dialed in. Look at that thing. No, it looks, why are you messing it up? Looks almost as good as Kyle Cross's beard behind the fence there. When we come back, we'll continue with the action here at AutoZone Streets of Long Beach, presented by Type S. I told you we're going to get you home before dinner, local time, 442. Only a few more battles left to find out who wins here on the streets of Long Beach. We've got another NGK Spark Plugs competition timeout. Look at that. Let's go on the boat. Let's go party. But we'll find out, play out when Odie Bakshi runs here. The Falcon Tire Field Suspension S15. Odi Bakshi says supercharged LS under the hood of the S15. And again, we've talked about Odie Bakshis and how just his performance, and specifically here, a third overall last year, and he won in Long Beach last year. He's won at Irwindale, but I mean, he had three wins overall. He won the first round because of the modified schedule. He won Atlanta, and then he bookended it by winning in Long Beach and Irwindale. And Odie's had great success here. He won back in 2019. So he's, he's very proven here in Long Beach. Here's the season schedule for 22. We're back at it with our traditional setup of kicking things off here in Long Beach, ending in Irwindale. But we've added a new stop, uh, removed a different location. Still eight stops for our championship, but we slide into Utah in September. Have you been to that track, Jared? I have. And I have been to that like? track. What's that? What is it like? What is it like? Uh, it's it's really dynamic. It's dusty. It's windy. Dusty and windy. So, but Sorry. but all, all that being said, is it, it's open. It's good to go. Um, so it, the smoke won't linger. It'll just the, blow it right out of there. Correct. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I've I, I've had a, another another racing series there, Nitro Rallycross, that I've been there. But yeah. right now we are. So the stage is set here. Remember, we saw Forsberg. Lorette had a great insight from him. Had some words with him. Transmission. 
didn't go into fourth. At the end, hung it out, had contact with Turk. Turk was able to change out his tires, got a fresh set of Nittos. Forsberg had to get hands on the car, see what's going on, see if it's running healthy. But with that, he wasn't able to put on a fresh set of GT radios, but definitely comes out swinging. Here we go, homeboys. Forsberg and Turk going against each other. The NOS entering all new Nissan C on GT radios. Whoa, baby! Whoa, doctor, look at that. Whoa. Nasty taps it in, backs it in. Backs it up. Chris Forsberg going for it. He knows he's going against number one qualifier, Ryan Turk. Wow, that he was exciting. absolutely looked <laughs> vicious. That all new Z. Don't care if it's brand new. Guess what? It ain't new no more. No, it is not. As he just backs it in. Let's look at it again. <laughs> that transition from outside zone one Slap to outside the zone two. Woo! Great initiation from Chris. Uh, Turk's right there behind him. But watch this transition. Out to outside zone one. Huge transition. He had to pull angle out because he kind of over-rotated a bit. But then gets into the wall at outside zone three. And you can see Turk behind him kind of like, whoa, what's going on here? Gave him a little bit of space without straightening, without in incompleting. So this will be an easy win for for, uh, for Turek after Forsberg's issues on round uh, on the first run of this battle. But wow, uh, Chris really threw it home here. Look at that transition, wow. And then uh, getting all the way out to outside zone three, got a little too deep in there. You can see a big correction from Forsberg as he gets into that wall. But uh, exciting to watch, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was really good. Is it enough for, you know, Forsberg just with, with that contact? and not being able to get off the line. I think, you know, I, I just unfortunately don't think it's enough for Chris Forsberg, but, no. uh, but I, th I think it was a great effort, a valiant effort for Forsberg and his team. But the Rain-X Toyota GR Corolla gets the win and advances on. So Ryan Turk and Odie Bakshis get and move on into the grade eight. So taking a look, Ryan Turk, has never won here before? I don't think so. No, he has not won. He has been second. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't able to uh, to get up to the line, so. Ryan Turk has five wins. He won Long Beach in 2009. Wow. Uh, yeah, but his last win was 2020 in Texas. All right, so Turk would love to uh, to, to get a victory here in Long Beach. So, advancing on the final four, Ryan Turk, Odie Bakshis, Odie, qualifying fourth. Now we move on to Denofa and Osbo. One and four overall last year. And uh, Osbo, Frederick Osbo, qualifying seventh. Denofa qualifying second. Then uh, talking about Matt Field, who qualified third, and Dylan Hughes, who qualified sixth. So look at, I mean, look at the numbers. It seems that qualifying has worked out, you know, just just the way you'd expect. And here yep. we are, just whittling it down. The gentlemen that uh, that are intended to be here are showed early on signs of success. Here we go. This should be interesting. Jared. This should be really good. Chelsea to Nova, Pennzoil, RTR Spec 5D. Wow, look at that nasty swing by Denofa, the defending champion, Frederick Osbo. Chasing him down. Jadopa taps it. Massive whoa. angle. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what was Jadopa going? Absolutely ham, steak, and eggs, all of it. Denofa has just been airing it out, but unfortunately, not a swish, a bit of an air ball when it comes to that flick. So, Denofa, again, always loves to go 11. Say yep. howdy, get rowdy. That is not where you want to be, Denofa. These are two very different driving styles here. Yeah. Osbo is calculated. He is very precise. Chelsea is very aggressive and very entertaining. And sometimes he goes just a little bit too far. But look at Osbo behind him. So what I found interesting initially was we always say that the chase car has to give the lead car the right of way on initiation. <laughs> Osbo always takes a chance by getting his nose just beside the rear of the car. And in this case, Chelsea swung the tail of his car out before initiating and Osbo had to avoid it. So that just before that happened, Osbo had to kind of get out of the way of Chelsea, but he managed to get real close to him anyway. Watch the transition here from Chelsea. 
huge, huge transition. So big that he could not maintain yeah. it and ended up going inside very aggressively. The car just gripped up as he lifted and it wanted to go in towards that, that inside wall. Managed to keep it off the wall, managed to keep it from spinning, and uh, Osbo stayed close behind him just mere inches away, but uh, incredible, incredible drive from both these drivers. Um, of course, Osbo just needs to get a clean, lot, uh, key, clean lead run in, in front here. It's going to be his. And it, it'll be his. So yeah. all he has to do is make sure he gets through. Uh, Chelsea's going to put on pressure. I'm hoping to see big things from Chelsea here. Just yeah. uh, put that pressure on Osbo and uh, force a mistake of some kind. But let's yeah. see what happens. All right, here we go. Frederick Osmo, Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota GR Supra. Gets out of the outside zone, like we said, just kind of run even keel. Oh, wow. but it's Danova! <laughs> Woo! That's what you wanted, Montaigne! Danova oh, heard no. you, but he dives in on the How outside did he make contact. That work? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Danova part time is a magician, obviously pulling a Mustang out of his hat <laughs> and massive angle. It didn't work on the first battle, but how he made that connection from that outside zone three, look, they're saying one more time already here in the building. <laughs> I'd love to see that again too. Oh man. Whew. I didn't think he was gonna get up to Osmo's side on no. inside clip one, and he did, but then of course he came in too fast and had to stop, you know, with, to make not make contact, but ended up stalling the car. But that was incredible. Watch the proximity from Chelsea Denofa here. So Osbo, great line there, great transition. And this is where Chelsea puts on the pressure. Probably got some door rubbing going on there. And then Chelsea's line right here, I thought there's no way that's gonna work. And it kind of didn't. It but it did, yeah. and then it didn't. <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna make it around the clip at all, but he managed somehow yeah. to draw a line, although very straight, right to that clip and just parked right there. Yeah, Incredible. I, 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 Lorette Nickel, if you can hear me, I want to see and hear <laughs> what was going through Chelsea's mind. Not only this run, because he knew he needed to throw it down. He's going against a defending champion. He was a contender last year, came up a bit short, and he came up a bit short right now. But you can just see he's driving with a certain tenacity, aggressiveness that he always does. But he's got to rise to the occasion. Slide him left for Denofa or right for Frederick. Ever podium. And he had the Permatex delivery right now. He wants to do Royal Purple Proud, the official oil of Formula Drift. Matt Field with a nasty snap. Snap into it like a Slim Jim. Out of boy. Matt Field goes wow. back, taps the bumper. He did it. That's the run you were looking for. Wow. One, two, three. Outside zones. Dylan Hughes pushes. Great wow. driving there by Dylan and Matt Field. You asked for it, remember, in his buy run. No, keep in mind here, <laughs> this is Matt Field's first official battle. Right. He tries to go against Mike Power. He dies coming off the line. Can't go against Hearst. His car is banged up. So this is his first official battle of the weekend. Dylan Hughes has his work come out for him here to match that run. Touching the wall in outside zone one, touching the wall in outside zone two. Maybe going slightly too deep in outside zone three, but still getting all the way out to outside zone three, close to the touch and go, close to the inside clip. That was a phenomenal run yeah. from Matt Field. Watch this, watch this. Almost scrapes the wall there. Does and a little scrape skirt. right there. And, outside and then zone he two. goes deeper. A little bit let's too go, deep Okay, here. let's go a little deep. Yeah, deep. It, it, you can see a slight you know, movement in his car there on the third one, but he managed to keep the line the same, stayed on throttle, no hesitation. That was phenomenal to watch. The precision from Matt Field just went over a skirt, slightly skirt. little bit there, but <laughs> It That's looked like incredible. he tapped Falcons, man. Both these guys on Falcons. Dylan Hughes on the Falcon team. Yep. Great to see wow. him. That was phenomenal. So Dylan, like I said, he has his work cut up for him now that he's going into the lead position. Yeah, um, Matt's like, hold on. Oh, you want me deeper, Ryan? Okay, here you yeah. go. Here you go, Ryan Lontane. Oh, you this? want me deeper? A <laughs> uh, little too deep. A little deep. <laughs> little uh, Goldilocks in the three Falcon tires. This one's too deep. This one's just, this one's too deep. So, <laughs> like, too deep. Just fun. Yeah, too deep, bro. Too deep. Too deep. All right, Dylan Hughes out front. Matt Field in the chase position. Dylan Hughes, Royal Purple. We kind of Falcon forgot to talk about Dylan in the chase there. We were so focused on the lead. I, uh, yeah, you know what? To be quite honest, I think this is going to go to a, a, a BC Racing side-by-side, -side, go for gold. It's going to have to. Yeah, I mean, Dylan, you know, what I'm thinking, though, Matt Field is going to be up, up, uh, up his rear end here. Yeah, Watch this. Deep. Matt Field initiates in tow of Dylan Hughes. Dylan. Okay, keeps it off the wall, pretty good distance. Dylan Hughes gets a little deep. Now let's see how he handles the final outside zone. Dylan Hughes, now he's stepping up. 
We talk about that X factor. Can they bring it? Wow. That field really close. What I tell you, I think this is going to be a side by side. It's a replay. Remember, this is for the last spot in Final Four, Field or Hughes. That was great. That was really good. Now, Ryan, I, I kind of want you to elaborate as far as bumper taps. There's a bumper tap and there's a bumper collision. We're talking about the wall. Not yes. so much. Dylan kept it off the wall, but still put it in all the right spots. He sure did. He saw what Matt did ahead of him in the lead, and he said, OK, I guess I need to do the same now that I'm going into the lead. He did get into outside zone three late there. You can see that he wasn't quite wide at the beginning of outside zone three, but he still did an awesome job. Uh, getting close to outside one, two, and three. So phenomenal job from Dylan Hughes. And here now we have our side-by-side. -side. So let's look at how the proximity is. You can see here that kind of similar through this area. Built Dylan's a little, a little shallow. bit on the inside there. Didn't go as deep, but of course, Matt went too deep. So, yeah, I'd say that that's pretty similar, but um, Matt Field definitely got closer on outside one, two, um, clearly on three as well. But um, you too, know, too deep on three. Too deep on three. Yeah. Which is technically closer than uh, Dylan did. <laughs> what did. Do I mean, when you're when you're rubbing Falcon. Those are the same wheels too. They are both on Forge Star. They're both on Forge Star wheels wrapped with the Falcon tires. Wow. Both these guys got Momo gear. I really like the mimic from the judges Matt have Field spoken. You spoken? In the chase. Yeah, we spoke. Well, You're we speaking a lot today. Yeah, a lot of speaking. Slide him left for Field, right for Hughes. Matt Field gets one, two, and Matt Field gets the win. Matt Field's going to the final four. Round of applause for Dylan Hughes. A great effort there. We will see Dylan Hughes and the Royal Purple BMW go high five him in the pits as uh, our final four is set for the final four. Keep it going until they leave that line. Let's yell, send it for Ryan Turk and Odie Foxies. Here we go, Ryan Turk comes out swinging, literally. Now coming into view in that first outside zone. Odie Foxies taking a shallower line. Turk gets out there, narrowly taps his bumper into the second outside zone, into the third outside zone. Odie Foxies taking that tighter line. The temperature's dropping, but the tire's staying hot. Really well done there by Ryan Turk and Odie Bakshis. Make some noise, Long Beach! That was a really clean run from Ryan Turk up front. Can't wait to see the replay here and look at how accurate he was on those outside zones. Looking at the initiation, it looked like they both got to angle really smooth, really quick, but Odie took a tighter line through that first corner. Got a, he got the proximity he was looking for, though, and you can see there are a couple of little baubles, but but he, Odie fell off a little bit there from outside zone two to outside zone three. Turk's running a really great line up front, really smooth. They did a great job around inside clip number one together. Good mimic there, but you can see here, Odie was inside a little bit, gets the car pushed back to that outside zone, but right there on the transition, Odie made a couple of mistakes on that transition. It wasn't the smoothest transition we've seen from him so far. Turk looking really strong on throttle. Odie running a slightly tighter line so out, out, throughout the outside zone number three. Turk really getting uh, a nice line there from the touch and go to inside clip one to the finish line. So in the chase position there, Turk's going to have to be close and really mimic the line that Odie's throwing down. If Odie fills his zone, Turk's going to have to fill that zone too. He needs to try to differentiate himself from Odie there, chase to chase comparison. And of course in the lead, Odie's got to lay down a really solid lead run. He's got to fill zone one, two, three, get tight on inside clip one. Yeah, a great effort there by Ryan Turk and that brand new Toyota GR Corolla. And I would say, yeah, that deciding factor there between outside zone two and three. Odie Bakshis, one of the best chasers in the game. Now he's out front. He's got the clean air. Can Ryan Turk put it together? Rain X is a sponsor, but no forecast of rain. Maybe some tears from some other drivers. We'll see as Odie Bakshis will initiate. Coming now, three, two, one. Boom goes the dynamite. Odie Bakshis initiates in that first outside zone. Gets out there, Ryan Turk tucks into that pocket. Odie, you see him scrape that back bumper now to the outside zone three. Ryan Turk tucks in, gets out to that BC race to go for gold. Touch and go. Oh, makes the noise. For Ryan Turk, that Rain-X, Toyota GR Corolla in the chase position on Nitto tires. Odie Bakshis pushing oh so hard in that Falcon tires. Field suspension S15. What do you guys think? Where are my Ryan Turk fans at? Make some noise.
Where are my Odi Bakshi's fans? Make some noise! Ryan, what do you say? Looked like Odi did a great job on one and two. And uh, Ryan Turk did a great job in the chase. It looked like he might have had an edge there in the chase position, mimicking the line that Odi was throwing down. It looked like he positioned his car a little bit better in the chase position. And looking at what Odi did in the lead there, great job on outside zone uh, three to the touch and go. Ryan Turek just touched that inside clip with the front bumper. So let's get the BC Racing side by side going. And it'll give us a good comparison, especially from this overhead view. So you can see there, good initiation from both on both runs. Right there, Ryan Turek from initiation outside zone one did a better job in the chase of mimicking the line. And I think he did a better job at outside zone three as well. It looked like Bakchis was cheat at the making a compromise, i got to stop using that word, no, from initiation to outside zone one, and also from outside two zone three. two to outside zone three. Yeah, Yeah. he just had a little bit of separation there. And and, and again, I I, I want to say that that wasn't Odie's best chase run, so that's where it just it, it becomes a becomes apparent because Odie was just so on it earlier. I think just that outside zone two to three in the chase, I think that's just going to be the straw that uh, that broke Bakshi's back. But keep in mind, uh, he, he will still go and go for that third place spot if he gets the win. Slide of left for Turk, and there it is. Odie Bakshi's gets the win. A great effort there by Odie Bakshi's. He goes through, going on, here we go. Send it, Long Beach. Here is Matt Field, Frederick Osbo. This should be another exciting one here, Lontane. Ooh. Matt Field, nasty initiation, a wide swing, coming in hot, gets all the way out there. You ask for oh, oh no. boy! Whoa! A massive hit by Matt Field. Let's make sure he's okay. A big hit by his hands out the window. Round of applause for Matt Field. Make some noise for Matt Field. We'll run that back, but that front left and that back right is damaged. Let's make sure he's okay. We're getting a thumbs up there. Thumbs so up, like round of applause okay. for Matt, the beast from the Bay Field. So Matt Field says he's okay. Thank you, Cal Club. Make some noise for Frederick Osbo, Matt Field, here we are. And this is just pushing to that razor's edge, and sometimes you just get cut. We kick the season off at the most unforgiving track, Ryan, and you know, the silly season is what it's called. There he is, he's out of the car. There was a bit of a, a hesitation on the transition there from zone one to zone two, and that hesitation caused the car to go further to driver's right than he wanted it to, and that's when it made contact with the wall, and he made too much contact with the wall. It wasn't one that the, the, the chassis or the, the rear bumper could absorb. Caused the car to spin, sent him into the wall. So let's see what went wrong. We'll get the replay up and analyze this, but I think that's what happened. So let's see here at yeah. initiation. Osbo had a late initiation there. If you see, he got put off, kind of uh, phased by well, let's focus his initiation. On that. Watch this right here. Tap. Oh, bang, there was a tap bang. that caused. Ooh. So that just grabbed him. It, 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 it didn't just, let it, him. It, it, yeah. count, it countered. That wasn't, from, that wasn't bumper. That hit chassis. From our perspective, we couldn't see how close Osbo was behind Matt Field. So it looked like it was just a hesitation on Matt alone. But it looks like Osbo's bumper, front bumper, caught his back oh, bumper. Wow. It didn't allow him to rotate. So this could go completely on Osbo here for this. For Let's go this. drone shot once again. So yeah. So talk about, so OK. Watch Matt, right here. As Osbo is close to Matt Field, Matt Field starts to rotate and watch his back bumper. See that, how it crunched right there? Because it he hit Osbo's Osbo. front bumper. Osbo didn't give him the space to transition, causing Matt to go straight for a slight second. And then as he rotated the car, it was already too far watch. to the right. And then Ooh. he was making contact with the wall. The car didn't have room to rotate after that. So in my view, this goes 100% on Frederick Osbo for causing this. And I think it all stemmed from Osbo being next to Field, running up to initiation. You can see that Osbo tried to avoid Field's initiation, his flick. And then Osbo ended up initiating late because it threw off his rhythm. Then he tried to get that proximity back, got too close, and didn't allow Field's Corvette to rotate which then caused him to go too far to the right before actually rotating, causing him to hit that wall.
So here's Matt Field, who we talked about. He didn't get much chase runs until yeah. earlier today. Even though he's out front, it's about getting those battles. So over overall, overall, it's a uh, it's a tough it's a tough bro blow for Matt Field. So it just comes down to. Yeah, he would be upset about this. It's there's a know. bit of a scowl here, sure. and 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 as you said, you're saying 100 percent. Have you conversed with your judges yet? I said 100 percent for me. Yeah, I, I can only you know. Clearly, I've been here with you. I haven't had the chance to talk to them, but for me, 100 percent, I would put this on Frederick Osbo. When you're in that chase position, you're making those calculations. How close do I have to be, not only to maintain proximity, but also how close can I be? that I don't interfere with what the lead car is doing. And in this case, sometimes we watch video of incredible transitions where that chase car leaves an inch yeah. in front of their car. You know, they just know their car so well, but it looks like Osbo just was in there a couple of inches too close and didn't allow for that rotation to happen. And when you have these walls on this unforgiving track, this is what can happen. You know, it's a risky business we're playing in yeah. here. This is, thankfully the cars are really well built. We have a lot of safety equipment in the cars. The drivers are safe, but this is what happens when uh, it goes wrong. And you were talking about Frederick Osbo. You're giving him credit on how he just has that awareness yep. of his vehicle and allowing that that lead car to transition in front of him. Not the case here. So let's take uh, let's listen to the sounds of the track. It's hard to watch, Jared. It's hard to watch. It is because, you know, Oof. not, I mean, fortunately he stepped out. You know, we saw Hurst go into that wall before. We've seen cars written off. We've seen everybody walk away. Safety is a priority, but yeah. at the end of the day, they want to win. Unfortunately, I, I, I do agree with you. The front end of that rock star Supra, Frederick Osbo, he knows he's in the final four. He knows who he's going against. If you give him an inch, you know, that, that could be the deciding factor. Unfortunately, that yeah. inch was the bumper in the side and impeding in Matt Field's transition, which caused another game of inches, which became a game of impact. Yeah. And front left, back right, I mean, that thing spun around. It straightened him out, corrected him, put nosed him into the wall, and spun him around. Glad he's okay, but the car has seen better days. Yes. Matt Field, the drift cave, you know, that's their operation up there in the Bay Area in San Jose. But unfortunately, I... I, I don't know if that's going to be repairable. This would be another situation of the 10, the comp timeout, 15 minutes. Yep. Is that enough? Right. And you were talking about Osbo being accurate earlier. And I think what personally what I saw here is that he got thrown off by the initiation. I think that threw off his rhythm and put him in a position that he wasn't used to being in because this is a, a game of uh, muscle memory and yep. initiation where you're used to doing it and getting to the wall where you're used to doing all of that. So I think he got thrown off there. Not to say that a driver can just make a mistake because they make a mistake, but right. that's what it looked like right off the bat. He ended up initiating late, which is very unlike Osbo to do, but you could see it's because he was trying to avoid Matt doing that flick and then throwing off his rhythm. So yeah. unfortunate for Matt Field in this situation that he's the, the victim, let's say, of, of what occurred, um, but this is uh, the way the, uh, the game goes sometimes. The cookie crumbles and the yeah. carbon fiber curls and the wheels get bent and the, yeah. the debris all over the place. Okay, I, right. I, so real quick, I, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint a picture here too for you. This is how Field went beyond Hurst. Literal and Hurst got into a crash, right? Hurst was given 10-minute allotment because Literal's at fault. Given another competition timeout, right? So he was given 15 minutes total. Wasn't able to get the victory, or excuse me, got the victory, but wasn't able to run. Matt Field progresses. Here's another picture. Say Field isn't able to fix his car. Field advances to the finals, right? Yep. Osbo goes to consolation round. Odie gets third place. Well, Field wouldn't be able to compete exactly. with Ryan Turk. Ryan Turk gets the win. Yep. This is possibly what could happen. So let's, let's, let's just look at that scenario. But as the plot thickens here, I throw it down to Lorette Nickel, where things are unfolding. Lorette, where are you at? Hey. Thanks, Jared. Uh, right with Frederick Osbo, and obviously you can see on his face he's very disappointed. Looked like there was some possible contact between you and Matt Field. Can you talk about what happened out there? Yeah, it wasn't just possible. It was me being totally too greedy, coming out of nine, uh, basically blocking him to do the transition, and he smashed into the wall. And I don't, I don't want to be that guy. You know, it's, it's, 
freaking sucks for Matt's car. It, it sucks with the rules the way they are. They're not a lot of the time to fix it, and it's frankly a lot to fix. And it, it, I feel like I, I rob people of a good battle, you know. But it's a heat of the moment thing, you know. I'm, I'm here, Matt's. You know, you got you can't let him go. So I trying to stay close, but I got too greedy, and this is something I've been trying to untrain and get better at, but today I ruined the day for him. So I'm, 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 I apologize, Matt, and your team. When everything is happening so quick and you only have a split second to make a decision, were you worried about how fast his car was and him actually getting away from you? Absolutely. That's always the case. And, and this track, it's... You, People have different ways of taking the first corner. Some people are hanging out there by the wall. Other people are lightning quick through there. And earlier today, I saw Jonathan Castro, my good friend, who was lightning quick through there. Whereas Chelsea, for instance, would maybe hang out on the wide line with more angles. So it's really hard to know exactly how much to hold back. And, you know, today I just ended up being too greedy and um, wrecked his car. So one of those days. It, there's a bit of history between you and Matt, and I know retrospect can sometimes be a really tough teacher, but I guess the obvious question is, what would you have done different there? I would have held back more. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure the Internet is going haywire over this, and with, with Matt and I maybe back in St. Louis, if that was your th what you're thinking about. But the truth is, Matt and I go way back. We've been hanging out in China together. We've had a lot of epic battles together and, and I thought he got as close as he could last year and he's going to get his championship and I, 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 I don't really know what to say. I, I apologize. Freddie, thank you so much. Uh, always very honest, authentic and genuine and so I know this isn't the way that he wanted the, the day to go. Guys. Thank you so much, Lorette. And there it is. That's that contact on that front bumper. And you know what? sportsmanship Matt Field, great effort bro thank you so much a great effort you know what's the sportsmanship the camaraderie between the drivers and the admitting fault because as he said you know it's not about the internet it's the competitors it's it's the gladiators of the sport they're going at it but it's you're going to go down with honor and that's that's your name you yeah. know Frederick Osbo is a defending champion he says it's a game of inches and unfortunately that inch was the other way and it didn't pay yeah. off so um did we, do we have a verdict? Is, is you said 100% fault. Well, what um, I wanted to say really yes, quick please. is that I hope that nobody here online thinks that Frederick Osbo in any way did that on purpose. That no was maliciousness. Strictly, no maliciousness at all. These guys are operating at the absolute bleeding edge of everything that their car is capable of and themselves are capable of. And when you're pushing this hard, when you're pushing this hard on the track, it's a game of literal inches, and he just miscalculated by a couple of inches. So. This is what I was talking about in the initiation right there. See how he kind of wiggled and didn't ready really get to angle the way he was supposed to anyway. Right here, you're going to see the back of Matt's car. You can see it rise up, the spoiler. The spoiler. Yeah, the spoiler rise up because the rear of the car got pushed up by uh, Frederick Osbo's nose. You know, he, he's saying the internet's going wild. I just hope that nah. nobody's blaming him for this. This I was really don't think purely so. an accident. He clearly feels bad, and I just want to make sure that it's, it's known. Um, I'm sure that uh, Chris and Brian have uh, assessed fault on Osbo as well in this situation. And in that case, Matt Field gets 10 minutes to repair his car. If he can't repair it in the 10, he'll then have to take a five minute competition timeout. And in the 15 minutes, um, he has to try to repair this, well, broken car here. As you can see, it's yeah. uh, in pretty bad shape. Um, I don't know how long it takes to repair a Corvette that has been damaged to this extent, uh, but hopefully they can uh, get it done in 15 minutes and we can have the second half of this battle. All right, so again, we'll find out what's going on, what's transpiring. We know Ryan Turk's already in the finals. When we come back, we'll take a short break. Let's find out where, uh, where everything falls, all the carbon fiber, all the tires. The track is reset. We'll find out what transpires between the second half, if there is one, between Osbo and Field. Ryan Turk waits in the wings. He's in the final. What other driver? Or what driver? Tell you, ask you. Let's just talk about our personal experience. We'll get to the competition because that's obviously very important. But uh, the debut of new cars. Uh, the, the, some some new faces. We got four yeah. rookies. International Darren Kelly. We'll see him in Atlanta. But overall, you being in the booth and the event overall. You know, yesterday was a little tricky with the change in weather. It seemed like just the sun coming out was enough to change the conditions on the track. 
I'm so happy that today stayed consistent throughout the day yeah. because it led to some incredible driving. The drivers got more comfortable in their cars, more comfortable with the track. Everything just Hold got on. better and better and better all the way until where we are right now, of course. Yeah. But um, it was uh, an, an awesome event, and I just love being up here talking with you about it all. It's been a great experience. I appreciate it. Obviously, my love for Sage runs deep, but uh, I, I appreciate the insight. So let's take a look at the bracket. Here's what's transpired. Here's how we got here. And here it is. Ryan Turk, Matt Field, they're in the finals. Osmo's at fault, but guess what? Field knows that he can't fix it in 10 minutes. He can't fix it in 15 minutes. So, Field, similar to Jonathan Hurst earlier today, Ryan Little and him got into it. Hurst would move on, but unable to compete. So Matt Field advanced on. What that means now is a bit of a role reversal. Matt Field moves on, but unable to run. So guess what? Without competing, with a buy run, a celebratory run, your winner here in Long Beach with this buy run, debuting his brand new Rain-X Toyota GR Corolla on Nitto tires, Ryan Turk is your winner here in Long Beach. So that means right now, let's yell send it on three. One, two, three, send it! Ryan Turk, a celebratory run for the Rain-X. Toyota GR Corolla on Ditto Tires, the rock star driver, the 411, the new dad, and now your 2022 Formula Drift Pro Champion here in Long Beach. Congratulations to Ryan Turk. He is your winner. Congratulations to his wife, his now son, and his whole team and crew debuting that all new Toyota GR Corolla in grand fashion. Again, the Super was debuted here a couple years ago with Frederick Osbo, and now this Toyota GR Corolla steps up and delivers. And just working out the kinks, congratulations to him, man. Yeah, that's, it's, I, I'm sure he would have loved to do a battle at the end here, but you take the wins you can get, and he fought hard throughout the day today. Matt Field fought, what, one battle, and then ended up in the wall, but yeah. it's, um, you know, your day can go in such an unexpected direction yeah. here at these events and uh, I think these guys are just thankful to make it this far in one piece and for, for him to be getting on to getting on the podium. <laughs> well you know. I say one piece. I mean <laughs> yeah. But I say one piece because it was it was it's tough obviously for Matt Field. Yeah, for sure. Beautiful. Absolutely well done there. And stepping outside of their Falcon vehicles, well, one and two, they're your frenemies, making content, having fun. So, without further ado, your third place finisher here at round one of the Formula Drift Pro Championship, piling that Falcon tires, field suspension, S15, third place, Odie Bakshis. Second place here on the streets of Long Beach. We'll see you in Atlanta, buddy. Hopefully we'll see your car all together. I know we will. The beast from the bay, piling that Falcon tire, Drift Cave Corvette. It is Matt Field. Second place here in Long Beach. And last but definitely not least, a new dad, an owner of a Rain X Toyota GR Corolla, Rockstar Nitto Tire Race Service, Toyota driver from New Hampshire, Ryan Turk, your winner at round one, AutoZone, Streets of Long Beach, presented by Type S. Congratulations to Ryan Turk, rightfully so, a crazy event. And if this is a sign of shape and things to come this season, it's going to be one heck of a season, our 22 season, kicking it off in customary fashion here in the streets of Long Beach. And I'm looking for Lorette Nichols so she should get some words. And there she is. Lorette Nichols, down to you with our winner here in Long Beach. Well, did you guys know that Ryan Turk's last win in Long Beach was at 2009? It was in 2009. Oh, that was my first win ever. Your first win ever, Ryan. You get to kick off the 2022 season with a win, with a brand new baby. Congrats to you and Shannon. Looking forward to Atlanta. 
Your personal expectations are that you keep this momentum going. So is that pressure a little bit more going into Atlanta? Uh, no, I just think uh, as long as we stay focused and the team has uh, an awesome uh, setup, that's awesome. That's great for me to drive and I'm comfortable and can run tandem and a car can be fast, then we'll be, so we'll be a car to be reckoned with out there. Right, and it feels like you and this GR Corolla really have hit a great stride. How much have you learned here that you can bring into Atlanta? A ton. Uh, I learned a ton about myself this, uh, you know, coming into this season as far as a mental game and also, uh, you know, the team being very on point this year and also uh, just the car being phenomenal to drive. Papadakis Racing and uh, all the boys back in the shop have done such a great job with this chassis and, uh, you know, my hat's off to them and, you know, we have a, just a greatly prepared car. All right, Ryan Turk, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of Long Beach round number one, 2022. Ryan Turk. Thank you so much, Lorette. Congratulations to the Turk trio now, and, and just uh, just so elated for him. Like you said, his first ever win was here. You know, he's sponsored by Rainx, but no rain in the forecast. But like I said, tears of other drivers. That's what's streaming off of his vehicle, courtesy of Rainx. But uh, again, the frenemies, two and three in the championship. Ryan Turk having the car, the motivation of Toyota and Toyota Racing, the GR Corolla being debuted here, awesome all around. I mean, that's a worldwide debut. That's awesome. Perfect For weekend. Perfect weekend. Number one qualifier, perfect event. Let's throw it down to Lorette Nickel, who's with Matt Field. Lorette. Oh, taking some photos there. Oh, we're doing the podium selfie. As always, you got to love it. Lorette, Lorette, if we could get some words with Matt Field down there, if we can. Yeah. Matt. Hi. There you are. We're just doing a little dance down here. Matt Field, first battle, you take the win. Unfortunately, your second one, uh, there was contact between you and Frederick Osbo. He did apologize from your side what had happened. Uh, he just didn't give me room to transition. I think he was a little bit worried about our speed and our performance throughout the whole weekend. So he was being as aggressive as he possibly could. I would have done the same thing, but yeah, it's definitely upsetting, especially in a position like that. Like you, you got to make room to transition. Everyone knows that. Uh, but again, we're all pushing it hard. He wanted to win. I wanted to win. But it is a bit of a bummer that I literally got one battle all weekend and winding up on the podium. Great start of the year, but my frame rails are like that. So thanks, Frederick. And how much other damage did you sustain? All four corners. Let's be let's be real. All four corners. Yeah, yeah. I did a 360. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Matt, thank you so much. You have enough time to get it fixed for round two. We'll handle it. All right. Yeah. I didn't have any doubts, Matt. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, and. And, and the, can, the candor of Matt Field is commendable. Uh, the, the wherewithal and saying, I have confidence, we'll be there, we'll handle it. With still a smile on his face, knowing Matt, uh, he's going to have a few adult libations tonight. Yes. And just get back at it tomorrow. And I was going to say that, you know, normally him and, and Ripper and the boys jump on the boat. They're not jumping on any boat. They're headed home. The Drift Cave and the cavemen there are going to be working hard and feverishly to get that car dialed because they operate a few vehicles. Yeah. You called it the perfect event for Ryan Turk. I completely just, it escaped my mind. There's a lot going on, Jared. Forgive yourself. It's okay. Oh, thank you. I appreciate be that. Easy on yourself. And we talked about it prior, building up just the anticipation of what transpired. But Ryan Turk gets it. The frenemies, they're two and three, two and yeah. three in the championship overall. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jared. This has been great. Looking forward to Atlanta. That's right. We'll see you in Atlanta round two, May 6th and 7th, the continuation of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. Thank you to Ryan Latane, Lorette Nickel, Chris Yule, Brian Eggert, our whole team. And again, to all the moms out there, we'll see you Mother's Day weekend there at Formula Drift uh, at Road Atlanta. The fans, the waves, the water, the excitement. And the Rain-X, Toyota, GR Corolla, Nitto Tires, Rockstar, Race Service, get the win. We'll see you in Atlanta. Send it! Formula Drift Nation.